So I wanted to make a video on um, the topic of how to how to sit with a friend who is um, in despair, how to sit with a loved one who is who is suicidal. And it's a topic very close to my heart. I mean, over the past five, six, seven years, you know, I've met so many people around the world um, struggling with with life, with keeping their lives going, with with trying to make their lives work, with um, struggling with depression, with 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 severe physical pain you know and sometimes people reach this point where they just feel they feel that they can't go on and I, this was my experience many years ago I, I spent many years of my life in a deep depression and I eventually got to the point where I I couldn't carry on I didn't want to carry on um, I didn't want to die actually but I didn't want to live I, I didn't I just didn't know what the next step was and you know, so I was in this place where my whole world was falling apart, or had fallen apart, and, and in a way, the, the logical so solution, in a way, the, the solution that the mind came up with, which wasn't really who I was, you know, the, but the solution the mind came up with was, well, kill yourself. So what does this mean um, when people say, um, I want to kill myself? I don't know. What I quickly want to say as well is I'm, I'm not a qualified doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a qualified psychotherapist, I don't have a, loads of certificates all over my wall. I'm speaking from personal experience, I'm speaking from, speaking as a human being who for many years battled with depression, suicidal depression, despair, existential nausea, um, and someone who is seen by some as you know, a teacher, author, counsellor, whatever I am. I haven't quite worked out yet what I, what I am. But, um, um, so I'm speaking from experience. I'm not saying, I'm not t trying to tell you that what I'm saying is right. It's right for you. It might not be right for your path. It's just, it's a perspective. It's a perspective that's been somehow forged in the fire of my own experience, my own pain, my own suffering, and, and awakening from that suffering. So what does it mean to to want to kill yourself when, when people say oh, I, I want to kill myself or what else have people said to me I, I want to kill myself I want to I want to escape I want to get off the planet I'm on the wrong planet I was born in the wrong body I don't belong here to kill the self to end the end the me to end the me so here's the thing um, what do they really want to kill what do they really want to put an end to because what, what I would say, and this is what I've been sharing for many years, again from my own experience, is actually who you truly are, who you truly are cannot be killed. Who you truly, truly are before your imagination of yourself, the good me, the bad me, the wonderful me, the terrible me, the successful me, the failed me, the happy me, the depressed me. Who you truly are before all your stories about yourself, your dream of yourself, your imagination of yourself. Who you truly are as life itself, as consciousness itself. Who you truly are cannot die, cannot be killed, cannot switch off. It's the light. The light of yourself can't go out. Can't go out. The light of who you are cannot be killed, cannot be destroyed. Um, you are life itself. So when we're saying, I want to kill myself, what we're really talking about is the, the false self, the false me, the identification. The false identification, the identification with the body and with the mind, the identification as this small, limited, separate being. Um, that's what we want to kill because yes, absolutely, that is painful. That can be excruciatingly painful to be a, a self, to be a me, to be a, if you think about it as um, a wave in the ocean, you know, and the, the wave forgets who it really is, the wave forgets that it's not separate from the ocean, the wave forgets that it is actually the ocean, it is the ocean appearing as a wave, so the, now the wave feels separate from the ocean, divided from the ocean, divided from source, divided from home. And then this terrible homesickness begins. This is really the human condition, you could say. This terrible homesickness begins. Where is the ocean? 
who am I? Where is the ocean? Where is home? And you start feeling so far away from home. And this can happen when you're very young. You know, um, the sense of homesickness, the sense of not belonging. And everyone experiences this to an extent, but we kind of uh, cover it all up. We cover up our sorrow with uh, distraction, with all kinds of activity, with with sex and shopping and drugs and alcohol and, and addictions to this and, and addictions to that and, and goal seeking goals, 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 goal, future, 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 destination, destination, destination. And it can all become so exhausting in this search for our completeness, our home, the ocean in time. And there's a part of us actually that always just wants to let that go, all of that go. So actually, when you really look at it, there's, there's a real intelligence to the urge, the urge to die. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. I'm saying there's, there's an intelligence within it. Because what it's really saying is, I am, I've been, for so long I've been pretending to be something that I'm not. I've been pretending to be this wave separate from the ocean of life. I've been pretending to be something that I'm not. And that's what has been hurting. And, and, and often people who get to the point of you know, wanting suicide, which is where I got many years ago, they just want to... Really, they just want to shed that whole burden of self, but they don't see any other way of doing it than killing the body, actually. But by, by numbing, absolutely, forever, numbing body and mind. Um, but this just goes to show how much we've identified with the body and mind. We've identified this, this thing called self, the me, with body and mind. Actually, who you are is so much more than that. You are infinitely vast. You are life itself. You are not this limited, tiny, little, separate wave in the ocean. You are the vastness of the ocean. You are life itself. You are absolute possibility. You are absolute um, openness. So much is possible for you. But when we get trapped in that little wave, that little me, that little... We feel so isolated and so hopeless and so divided from what we long for. So really when you, you know, the longing to kill the self is the longing for, to be reunited with the ocean. The longing to kill the self is the longing for home. For home. And it's in a way, but we're missing something. What we're missing is that home is not never far away as the wave. The ocean is never far away. It's intimately already present. It is presence itself. Our home is our own presence. Our home is this present moment. Our home is who we are. So really, you can't get home. You can only remember that you have always been home, that you are always home. And the urge to die actually is this ingenious and very, very misunderstood longing to return home but the, the the mind thinks that in order to return return home i have to do something and we get to this point where we run out of options kill myself that that's how i'll get home that's how i'll get home but it's uh really it's the, it's the longing to shed the identification with the separate self the longing to shed identification with with body and mind so there's intelligence to it there's intelligence to it it's it's really a call for love. It's a call for love. It's a call for love. Now, how to meet someone, how to meet someone who longs to die, how to meet someone who has that urge to escape burning within them, which is really the, long for, the longing for home. How to meet someone who has that longing for home burning within them in this moment. How do we meet them? What do we say? What do we do? How can we help? And of course, when, when there's a friend or a partner or a loved one and, they're, and we're with them and they're in pain and they're struggling and they're filled with sorrow and, and this burning urge to die even, I mean, that can bring up so much pain in us, so much frustration. We want to help them. We love them. We care about them. We want to help them. What can we do? What can we say? So we're sitting there struggling to think of what can I do? What can I say? How, how, can I, how can I help? How can I make this better? How can I fix this? How can I, how can I stop them? That's often where we get to, isn't it? How can I stop them from feeling what they're feeling? 
How can I stop them from doing what they say that they're going to do? How can I stop them from having this present experience? That's often where we get to. That's often what so much of our frustration and despair and our own pain is really about, our own discomfort. Because it can be very uncomfortable sitting with a loved one in pain, of course, because you know, we, we love them. And what I want to say as well is that I'm not telling, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, give up on trying to help them. I'm not, I'm not saying stop caring. I'm not saying on a practical level, don't, you know, don't take them to the hospital or take them to the toilet or feed them. I'm not, I'm not saying give up all of that. This is just, there's a deeper invitation here, an invitation that's often missed to what does it mean to truly, truly meet the one in front of you? What does it mean to truly, truly meet the one in front of you? who's in pain, a loved one in pain, what does it mean? And so, again, so quickly we, we want to rush to fix them, change them, stop them feeling what they're feeling. And it's natural, but, but, I mean, and you know this when often when, you know, you're, you're in pain and someone comes and tries to help you, tries to change you, Often what that can feel like, actually, even if they have the best intentions, it can feel like a rejection of you as you are. And actually, deep down, what you long for, what you're burning for, actually, is to be met, to be touched, to be held, to be embraced as you are. What you're looking for is that sense of, it's okay here. It's okay to be here. Because that's what the suicide is all about, isn't it? It's, it's not okay to be here. It's not okay to be here. Escape, escape, escape. What you long for, what you're burning for, is to be met here in the midst of the fires of hell. And that's really your question. That was always my question underneath all of the other questions. Was, you know, who, who will meet me in the fires of hell? Who will meet me with this burning, with this longing? And just, just for a moment, who will not turn away from me? Who will hold my hand in the midst of hell? Who is willing, who is courageous enough to to touch me in my pain and just for a moment not turn away, just for a moment not try to give me answers, second hand answers, other people's answers. I, I got to the point, I was just sick of the answers. I was sick of other people's answers. I didn't want any more answers. I didn't want any more solutions. I was just, I was burning to, to live actually, but it was expressing as the burning to die. I, of course, it wasn't clear to me at the time what was going. I wanted to live. And if you see it this way, you it's only because you you love life so much. It's only because you know what's possible. It's only because you are so deeply in touch with life that you are life itself, that you feel it so intensely, that you could long to die so intensely. It's almost like, you know home so intimately. You know home so intimately that the homesickness is so intense, you see, but only because you know home so well. If you didn't know home on some level, you could never be homesick. If you did not know home on some level, if it wasn't some vague memory of home, if there wasn't some vague kind of nostalgia for something that was, you could never long for it so intensely. So the fact that someone is burning so intensely for home shows you actually deep down how deeply in touch they are with home, but have probably forgotten because they're so focused on escaping the moment and the next scene in the movie of their lives. They're so busy rewinding and fast forwarding the movie of their lives that they've kind of forgotten home. <laughs> it's all about the forgetting of home. So that this is our challenge as, as you know, ones who are privileged enough to sit with friends who are burning with longing. In a way, it's a real privilege. It's a real privilege. How can we sanctify that moment? How can we truly meet them? How can we just for a moment touch them in their pain, in the midst of their pain, and not turn away? Because that's what they're longing for, perhaps. And again, this is only a perspective. I'm not saying I'm right. How can we meet them in their pain? That's the question. That's the question. Can we just for a moment drop the, the facade? They're sick of facades. 
They want to live. They want to live, to touch life, to live authentically. They're longing for truth. Longing for truth. Longing for truth. So, just for a moment, can we drop our persona? You know, the persona of, I am the one who's going to fix you. I am the one with the answers for you. I am the one who knows. I'm the expert. Or even worse, I am the spiritual guru. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the spiritual expert. I know all about, I know all about life. Can we just for a moment drop that and meet them as equals, absolute equals? Because often, you know, when we play the expert and we give them our secondhand answers, and it's out of our own discomfort often that we do that, out of our own discomfort, quick, give them an answer, quick, uh, regurgitate some memorized secondhand answer for them. Again, I'm not saying any of this is wrong. I'm asking us to look deeper. Can we look deeper? Can we just for a moment resist the, the temptation to play the expert, the one with the solution? And can we actually begin to honour, deeply honour, to sanctify the place where they are? That right now in this moment, yeah, they, they feel this, this burning longing, this despair, this, this urge to leave. Perhaps that's where true healing can begin is the place where we are willing to touch them in their pain just like the story you know the story of Jesus he was the only one willing to touch the lepers and the lepers are really the of course it's it's all symbolic the lepers are the parts of ourselves that we're, for, and up until now we've been unwilling to touch these energies that just wants to want to move in us they want to be set free they want they're so blocked these energies that are so blocked because they've been repressed or denied or ignored and actually it, you're, you're meeting a friend and actually this is this is like one final cry for help this is one final cry you know for the, these energies want to be touched even if it's the this the energy the the urge to die energy which is really secretly the urge to live who is who is touching that who is willing to touch that who is willing to sit with someone and just for a moment not try to stop them from feeling that so many times in the past years i've been sitting with someone who's been experiencing the urge to die and I've just I've seen amazing things happen you know unexpected things happen um when I just don't try and stop them from feeling that you know I, I kind of I meet them there I, I in a way I just I just validate what they're feeling it's like I don't come with fear I think that's the absolute key that's the absolute key is not to come to them with fear, as fear. Oh, you, oh, oh my God, you're gonna kill yourself. Oh my God, stop, you shouldn't feel that. Oh, what about this and what about that? And fix, fix, fix and help, second hand, second. Come to them not as fear, come to them as love, come to them as presence. Come to them as presence. I am here with you. You are in the fires of hell, but I am here with you you and I am not going to walk away, I'm not going to abandon you. I, I understand how you feel and this word understanding is not just of the mind, the, the understand, the word understand literally means to stand, stand in the midst of, to stand with, to stand in the midst of. I understand you, I'm standing with you in your pain and just for a moment I'm not trying to fix you or change you which you may feel as a rejection. You know, even with the best of intentions, you know, if out of our own fear we try to fix or change someone or give them an answer, we may just be distracting them from their own original healing. Perhaps there's something within that pain they need to touch, they need to feel, they need to be allowed to feel. Perhaps there's something intelligent there. Um, so in, in, in skipping over this moment and trying to get to the next moment, trying to, get, trying to fast forward to the moment where they're fully healed, w we may just miss the, the gifts, the, the gold contained within their pain. And of course that means we have to be willing to sit with our own discomfort, our own frustration, um, our own urge to fix them. Can we sit with that? Can, they, can, can, can we both burn together? Well, this is really a place of intimacy, a place of real connection. Can we, can we burn together, you with, with your 
pain, your despair, and me with my frustration, my sense of powerlessness, my urge to change you. Can we sit together and in the midst of the, the mess, the seeming mess, can we find a place of real connection? I am here. Come to them not as fear, come to them as acceptance, come to them as love, come to them as, not as a, a fixer, but a friend, not as one who rejects them in the midst of the fire, but embraces them. And perhaps that's the place where great healing can begin, where we're truly willing to touch each other in the darkness, which is the light, which is the light. Not, not rush to quickly extinguish the darkness, because doesn't, doesn't that just bring more darkness? But to fearlessly plunge into the darkness, into their darkness, which is our own darkness, knowing ourselves as the light. And here's the thing, not to confuse the one in front of you with who they think they are. Because in a way, that's what they're doing. They're confusing their true self with this small, limited, um, with the story, of, with their imagination of themselves. Don't confuse them. Don't confuse their true being, their massive potential. Don't confuse, don't confuse their true identity as life itself with their limited imagination of themselves, the failed one, um, the depressed one, the, the one who's going to kill themselves. You know, um, and watch, watch your own fear. You know, oh my God, if I don't, if I don't change them right now, they will kill themselves. If I don't change them right now, look at the urgency in yourself, which may be just a form of fear. Um, so this is just, this is a perspective. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just inviting you to this possibility that perhaps a more authentic, more loving, more compassionate meeting is possible with, with those who long to die. Because really deep down, deep down, and this is the thing, they are not so different from us. We all long to live. We all long to live. So in a sense, we all long to die. If you, really, if you really understand what that means, we all long to shed the false. Because remember, who we are can't die. For, who, for, who, for life itself, there is no question of death. Life can't die. Life has no opposite. This vast intelligence that, that is the entire universe and beyond, there's no opposite. Uh, birth is the opposite of death, not life. So, you know, who we truly are can't die, who I am, who you are, who I am as life itself, consciousness itself, who you are, life itself, consciousness itself. I am what you are. It's not two, this is it, it's not two consciousnesses <laughs> meeting each other. There is only one consciousness. So within, within consciousness, Sometimes the urge to escape consciousness arises. It's not a question of deleting that urge. It's a question of understanding it, knowing how to hold it, meeting it, understanding what it's really about. Um, not going to war with that energy in yourself. The, the, the one in front of you, they're already at war. There's already enough war. We don't need to add more war. We don't, we don't bring your war. Stop feeling what you're feeling. Rejection. Fear. Don't bring your war. There isn't already enough war in the room. War will never end war. Darkness can't end darkness. Be what you are. Be the light. Meet them as that. Meet them as light. Remind them. Not even in words. You don't need to. This isn't about lecturing them. Not telling them you are the light, because that could also be felt as a rejection. But this could be, you know, communicate this without words, that they are also the light, and they're also beloved. 
And they're also worthy. They are also, you know, a unique, perfectly unique expression of the vast intelligence of life, even in their pain, even in their despair. They are life itself. And stay in this moment, even if they're going off into the future and the past, stay with them in this moment, because this is where life is. Stay with them in the moment. Be a, be a companion. Be a friend. Yeah. Meet them in the darkness. Touch them where perhaps no one else has ever been able to touch them. Validate the place they are. And who knows, you know, who knows what's possible? Who knows what's possible from, from that place? When we truly turn to face each other, turn to face what's here. Thank you.